Welcome to the Retro Graveyard, the show where each week, <laughs> week, we take a different piece of old discontinued video game hardware back from the grave to give it a retrospective. And this time, we're talking about the Nintendo Play Yan. So this is definitely one of the more obscure things we've talked about on the show. The play in is a digital media player made for the Game Boy Advance SP, but it also works on the original Game Boy Advance, as well as the Nintendo DS and the Game Boy Micro. This original play in launched in September 2005 for 5,000 yen, which is about 50 US dollars. So although this original version was never released outside of Japan, its successor, which was really just a minor upgrade, called the play in Micro, launched at the same time as the Game Boy Micro in uh, Japan as well as Europe, and uh, in Europe it was called the Nintendo MP3 player. Catchy, right? But anyway, this version. Inside the box there isn't much, there's an instruction manual, it's in Japanese, that's only written in Japanese, I can't read anything, but I can understand the pictures. <laughs> and uh, actually it lists the video specs which I can read, so that's, that's handy. And of course we have the play in itself, Looks uh, just like a regular Game Boy cartridge, just a little bit bigger. It uh, has an SD card slot, and I've added this SD in, it doesn't come with one. And it has a headphone jack on the top there. And imagine they put this here because the built-in headphone jacks on the Game Boys are fairly noisy. I'd imagine this one's of uh, higher quality. But more on that SD card slot. This is only an original SD card slot. It does not take SDHC or SDXC. Remember, this came out in 2005. So that means the maximum capacity you could put in this thing is two gigabytes. Fairly limiting, that's like about 170-ish songs at 128 kilobytes a second. So you can use it on the original Game Boy Advance, but Nintendo does not recommend it. Partially because the screen is only reflective, it's not back or front lit, not the greatest for watching videos on, but also you only get like three hours of battery with the, the double A's apparently, so uh, yeah, it's a bit of a battery hog. A lot better to uh, use something like the SP or the Nintendo DS that has uh, a rechargeable lithium ion battery. So what specifically can you do with a play in? Well, you can play music, that's pretty cool, right? You can play MP3s on it. A lot of people didn't have MP3 players at the time, so I would've loved this thing. It won't play uncompressed WAV files or any other fancy compression like ACC or FLAC or whatever. Definitely no DRM. It only plays MP3 files encoded at 128 kilobytes a second. You can also play movie files on it, not too shabby. The files have to be H.264 and in an MP4 container. And no higher than 352 by 288 according to the manual, and at a maximum bitrate of 1 megabyte a second, so. But on the small screen, the video doesn't look that bad at all, honestly. Also included in the box is Media Stage version 4.2 for Nintendo, which is a special version of a Japanese software called Media Stage that is uh, a video converter to make videos that are specifically compatible with the play -in. Pretty handy, not everyone has Adobe Media Encoder or Apple Compressor laying around, especially not in 2005, so that's definitely handy. And in true Nintendo fashion, there's one more thing you can do with it. There are 13 mini games available from Nintendo's website. And of course, we're gonna go through all of them. Why not? Let's go. Okay, so this first one is called Wave, and you have to time your guy's movement in line with the other people. And it gets faster and faster until you eventually, eventually fail. There we go. And this next one is called Nose, and you actually have to shoot the fingers before they get inserted into your nostrils ending the game. Okay, Nico Roid, you're a uh, android cat, I guess, and you have to shoot down these bats, which is a little hard because the left and right kind of rolls around like that, and they come down a uh, Space Invader style until you die or get hit by a bomb randomly. Next one's called Keeper, you're just a goalkeeper. Deflect the balls, one gets in the net, you lose. Next one's called Avoid, in which you're a bat avoiding some balls. That's pretty much it. 
It's absolutely riveting. Best gaming experience ever. Bat, you're not a bat actually in bat. You're a batter, and you gotta hit these baseballs. Miss one and you lose. Next is fish, where uh, it's actually like Chopper, that old Flash game where you had to fly in the cave and avoid the cave. It's like exactly like that. It seems to just go on forever. There's not much to this one. It's hard to lose, actually. Then we have fire. Um, you just shoot at these balls again, and you, yeah, kill them before they get to the top and end the game. Jump! Um, you hit A, and it makes your guy duck. You release A, it makes your guy jump. So you gotta jump over these crabs and duck underneath these weird helicopter things. And next, lastly actually, we have memory, and uh, yeah, it's basically just Simon, except for every round the pattern changes, so it's like a more challenging version of Simon. So in conclusion, was the play in a cool, useful device for its time? Absolutely. But in this age of Android, iOS, and uh, 3DSs, does it have any practical use? Absolutely not, unless you're a collector, I guess. Anyway guys, that's it for the play in. If you uh, by any chance had this thing, let me know what you thought of it in the comments, although I doubt you did. Let me know what you think of it anyway, and uh, be sure to thumbs this video up if you like it, and subscribe for more Retro Graveyard. New episodes whenever I feel like it. Thanks for watching.